So it's soaking wet outside, but um, so we can't really move the RV right now. However, we're just about 20 feet short of plugging in. So for today, we're gonna just go down to 15 amps. We're gonna have unlimited power. Whoa. <laughs> the spark sparked. That sounded like something fell off. Like a telephone pole? Like a telephone pole fell down. Yeah, we better go check that out. So welcome back to another episode of Roots on Earth. Today we're going to go over what worked and what didn't on the six months that we've been living off grid. We just got power uh, about last week or so. Um, so I thought it'd be a really good time to go over what I would do again and what really wasn't worth the investment. So one of the first things that absolutely worked was our water system. Um, I have like a three or four part video on this building these uh, totes here. So what we did was we had a big tanker come in, fill them up with water. They're all plumbed together. And I have a little RV pump here. Let me show you that. The water comes in, goes to the pump, goes filtered, and goes all the way out to the RV. This has worked very well for us. Even in the winter, uh, we what I would do is just ensure that only one of these tubs was open at a time, so the others remained full. We didn't really have any freezing, so it worked out pretty well for us. But we are about a week and a half away from being able to use our well, which is the world's ugliest rock right there. Um, <laughs> so they just came and did a water test, and we should be getting the results here the next day. Now, another thing that did work for us really well was our generator. So I went through three different generators for power. We ended up settling on the WEN 3600 inverter. And uh, the, the first generator we had was similar, but it was smaller. It was a Craftsman, which is much better brand in my opinion, um, but it just couldn't keep up with the loads. So we ended up then going to a different one that was not an inverter and I would not recommend it, but it was generating 4,000 kilowatts nonstop, even if we weren't using it. So in my opinion, if you need a generator, get an inverter, one that will go up and down and generation on depending on what you need. So this little Wen is 400 bucks and it's been fantastic. Um, it is, I would hands down, I, I wish I would have started off with this versus everything else I've done. So what didn't work? Well, one of our biggest failed exper experiments was the laundry. I thought, hey, how cool would this be? You know, we have our water, we have the generator. Uh, we picked these up, I think it was 50 bucks used on uh, Facebook Marketplace. And I even replumbed the uh, dryer to be uh, able to hook up to a propane tank. But the worst part about it is, well, look, you drop a piece of clean clothes and it's no longer clean. And we don't have hot water. So it just makes it much more difficult than throwing everything, going into the laundromat and you doing your laundry there. Not to mention, you're still spending a decent buck as you got to fill up that gener generator with gas in order just to run your washer and dryer. I wouldn't recommend doing that again, unless maybe you had like a shed to put it in. In terms of dealing with our wastewater, um, one of the best deals that I found was actually using a porta potty company to get one of these tanks like here. And every three weeks or so, they come and pump it out all in, I think it's like 75 bucks a month for the sewer costs here. Definitely do that again. If we were gonna be off-gridding much, much long-term, of course, putting in a septic system would be key, but we'll be doing that as part of when we build our house. But the rush was just to get here on the land, call your porta potty company, uh, local, they most likely have these, these tanks here that you can rent um, and use that until you have your septic system in. The RV, it worked. Um, if we had to do it all over again, we would have gotten a bigger RV, um, a fifth wheel that had a washer and dryer built in. But the Grand Design 321BH um, did, did and continues to work for us. 
However, it works. I would do that again if I had to. Um, like I said, though, I think there's some better options available, especially since we have a bigger truck now. Um, the reason we bought this one originally is because it was supposed to be the biggest that our Toyota uh, Tundra could tow. However, after towing with it, uh, we had to upgrade our truck to a bigger one. And then at that point, you know, I didn't want to buy another RV too, but uh, in hindsight, getting a bigger trailer, bigger truck would have made life a lot easier living here off grid. So we've tried a few different internets out here. Uh, we had the T-Mobile home internet, which worked pretty well um, until and some, the trees came in, the leaves came in, and then it didn't work too well. But what has been working is Starlink. So fortunately, I was able to borrow this satellite dish and the, the equipment from my brother, um, and we're using that until we get the house up and running. The only downside about the Starlink that I found is, um, well, actually two things, one, it has to be in the middle of our field here just because of all the trees facing south in my direction here and then secondly it uses a lot of power when you're just living off of a generator and a battery this really eats a ton of power that i did not expect uh the t-mobile home inter internet if that works for you in my opinion one it's cheaper and two it uses far less power so speaking of power what has worked is the anchor battery system that we picked up uh, we also got these two solar panels which I'm 50-50 on whether I would do the panels again. They did help, but they weren't as useful as I would have hoped. Um, but essentially what we would do is every morning I'd get up, I'd start the generator, recharge that battery. Um, usually it takes about an hour and a half. Send a, a text to my wife as I was off to work. Um, and so she would know, hey, at 10 o'clock, it's time to turn off the battery. If the solar was out and if we had sun, by the time I get ho got home from work, um, the battery was still about 60%. I would start the generator up again and let it go until it's fully charged and then call it quits for the night. So I would definitely use the anchor system again. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I would also, if I, money was unlimited, I would probably upgrade to one of the bigger models that they have out now, as I think we could probably get away with using the generator only one time a day. Another thing that worked really well for us is this enclosed trailer. This is one of the first things that we purchased before moving to the land mainly because I had to put all my tools somewhere. But not only did it work as a little wood shop um, and a place to start building our chicken, chicken coop and other projects, but it also stored, um, worked as, as dry storage for buying paper towels or uh, building supplies or anything else we needed. So we didn't want to commit to a shed because we didn't know where exactly we wanted to put the shed. And this is also gonna serve a lot of good use as when we finally do move into our house out of our storage unit, uh, we'll be able to uh, use this to load up everything and, and get it here. So I would definitely recommend some sort of enclosed trailer if you're not quite sure where you wanna put things yet. Otherwise, a storage shed is a much easier, better, cheaper investment than buying one of these trailers. However, this is gonna be a lot easier to sell when we're all done with it too. So that's it for our six month update of living off grid, uh, what worked, what didn't, what we would do again. Now that we're officially moving on grid with the electric, hopefully some of this was useful for you who are anticipating or planning to go off grid, maybe for a shorter period of time. Please put in the comment below any suggestions, um, but uh, we are looking to continue living here off grid-ish uh, for the next 12 months or so as our house gets built. But please follow along, if you like this video, please click that like button, click subscribe, and we're looking forward to having a lot more cool projects here on the farm. Until next time.